And last week we spoke about eyes to see, eyes to see. And I just felt led. <laughs> there was so much more that God showed me. <laughs> he gave me more eyes to see in this message. And, and I want to continue in this same thought, eyes to see. Come on, someone say eyes to see. Well, I brought my binoculars up here this morning. Is that okay? Come on, eyes to see. Someone say eyes to see. Ooh, turn, turn in your Bibles to the book of 2 Kings. 2 Kings. I, lo I, I, love, I love God's word. 2 Kings. Eyes to see. Lord, we thank you again for your word, and we just ask you to give us eyes to see. Give us eyes to see. We learned last week that the word of God opens the eyes of the believer to see the spiritual truth that God wants us to see. If you ever needed God to show you something, it's going to be found in his book. It's going to be found in the word of God. Amen. And I pray that you are a people that are always looking to the word of God so that God can show you what he wants you to see. Everything we need, all the problems and all the things that we have in life, the answers are found. The questions of life and the problems that we have are found in the word of God. I really believe that. And we found last week that we are in a spiritual war. That there's a spiritual war happening that we can't see in the natural. It's called spiritual warfare. And in Ephesians chapter 6 Starting at verse 12, I'm going to read from the Amplified Version. It says, for our struggle, come on, someone say my struggle, is not against flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the rulers, against powers, against the worlds of forces of this present darkness, against spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places and supernatural places. Some of us wonder why we're having such battles sometimes in life. It's because there's a spiritual war happening. The very fact that when we said yes to Christ and when we said yes to do our best to live for God, a warfare happens. It's a spiritual war that's taking place. And not only are we having these, these physical battles that we struggle with, right? Sometimes we struggle with mental battles and battles how we see ourselves and battles how we feel about ourselves and battle how others see us. Come on, maybe it's just me. But we have these battles, but then there's this spiritual battle going on. And I believe that God is wanting to open our eyes to the spiritual battles that we have because not only does he wants us to know we have spiritual battles but he wants us to see the victory that we have come on someone say i have the victory look what helen keller said she quote this and she said the only thing worse than being blind is having sight but no vision Helen Keller was a blind person. She wrote books. She wrote poems. She didn't let her physical blindness to stop her from living out God's plan for her life. And she said the only thing worse than being blind physically or being blind and having no sight is having no vision. Having no vision. And, and God's word speaks a lot about having vision. He has a vision for you. He has a vision for me. And you need to know that there's no more important vision than the vision that God has for you. Not how other people view you, not how other people see you. Come on, it's how God sees us. Why? Because he is our creator, amen? Look at Proverbs 29 and 18. And somebody's thinking, are you going to preach with those binoculars? All oh, I think I am. Around my neck. It's just reminding me that God has given me eyes to see. Come on, I see some of you. Ooh. Ooh, I ain't see you in a while. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I see some of you. Come on, I see you online. You think I can't see you? I see you drinking that coffee on the sofa. Come on, I see you. <laughs> Look what the Word of God says. Proverbs 29, 18, Amplified Version. It says, where there is no vision, no revelation of God and his word, the people are unrestrained. But happy and blessed is he who keeps the law of God. Wow. He says where there is no vision. God is not saying where there's no vision for your life. He's saying where there is no vision and revelation of 
him, when there's no vision and revelation of his word. Come on, we have a lot of vision for our lives. Come on, some of you have your vision board up in your room, and you know what you want to do and where you want to be three years from now, one year from now, ten years from now. And that's great to have, but wouldn't it be amazing for us to know God's vision for us? God has a vision for us. And he says, where there is no vision, no revelation of God for his people and from his word, the people are unrestrained. In other words, another word for unrestrained is that the people run wild. The people run without restraint. And I want you to know, and God wants us to know that God wants us to be a people of order. And the people of con- that's controlled by the spirit. We have restraint because when every time we read God's word, listen, every time we read the word of God, God speaks to us and God shows us. And it gives us spiritual strength to restrain ourselves from acting out. Come on now. I know you be wanting to act out on some people in your life right now. But every time you pray and every time we worship and every time we get in the word, he gives us supernatural strength not to act out. Come on. Some of you be trying to want to act out on that co-worker. You think it's you, but the Holy Spirit's been holding you back. <laughs> Some of you have been trying to act out on that, that loved one, that spouse of yours, but the Holy Spirit says, don't say that. Come on. No, oh, that's just me. Okay. Con- con- confessions of a pastor. Come on. <laughs> where there's no vision, the people, as another translation said, where there's no vision, the people perish. God has a vision for us. And I have some hope words for you today, man. If we could see what God sees in us, we would be convinced that we got the victory. If we can see what God sees in us, we would be convinced that we have the victory. And I want God to show me, come on, I want God to give me eyes to see that though I'm going through this attack, though I'm going through this trial, though I'm going through this tribulation, though I'm going through this situation that I've told nobody about yet, but I've been going through by myself. I I just want you to show me, God, that there is more that's against, that's, that's for me than those that are against me. We saw that last week, and we're going to look at that story. I just want to know, God, that you're with me and that you're for me. And you know what God says? When you look through my word and you look through my lenses, I'm going to show you that you have the victory. He wants us to know, church, that we're not in this battle alone. Some of us have been in battles, and God's like, You've not shared your battles with people, but I know the battle that you're in. And because you're my, my son and my daughter, you're not in this battle alone. I mean, you know, that's good news right there. I'm not in this battle alone. I don't know what battle you're facing, but I know the battles that I face. And God tells me time and time again, son, I'm with you. Son, I'm for you. You're not alone. I have a plan for you. Just follow my plan. Follow my word. Follow my spirit. And I'm going to show you everything that you can't see. That's going to come to pass in your life. God has a plan for us. We're not alone in the battle. Amen. Isn't that a good thing? We're not alone in the battle. You're not alone in the battle. He knows your battle. He knows what we struggle with. And I'm so grateful that he does. You know what he wants us to know too? I'm just, I'm just sharing some notes that he's, that he's put on my heart to share with you. Because I love you guys. Come on. I love you church. And I, it is my job. My greatest responsibility and honor as a pastor is to give you God's word. Not my opinion. To so give you the word of God and then, and then hopefully we will take what, what God's word says and, and then we will obey it. Amen. But he wants us to know, listen, that he knows our battles. But when we look to him and depend on him, the private battles that we go through, when we look and depend on him, he will give us public victory. Come on. I said the private battles that you go through. When we look to him and depend on him, he will give us public victory. I want public victory for my private battles. Come on, I want public victory for my private struggles. I want public victory for my private struggles because there's strength when we struggle. Because when we look to God, God gives us his supernatural strength when we go through our private battles. But our battles are not alone. And 1 Peter 4.12, this is not going to, this is a bonus scripture, by the way. 1 Peter 4.12, read this in your scripture, in your word. Because the temptations and the trials that are set upon us are not unusual, church. And can I say that I believe that in these last days, the trials and temptations and tribulations are going to increase. It's really quiet in here. Pastor Ruma, I thought this was going to be a positive message. I'm positive that in the day that we live in, <laughs> that the trials and the tribulations and the t- temptations, they're going to increase. Because the Bible says as the day goes darker, the enemy grows 
His attack is intense on God's people, but that's why we have to look to God's word. And look what Peter writes in 1 Peter 4.12. He said, Beloved, do not think it strange. 1 Peter 4.12. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though something strange is happening to you. He said, don't think it's strange you're going through what you go through. Don't think it's strange you feel the way you feel about yourself and you feel what you're going through and what you're facing. And don't think it's strange that the battle you go through, that you share with no one else. He says, you're not the only one going through it. But if you're a child of God, know that God is with you and that God is for you. Amen. Second Kings chapter 6. Let's go there. We're going to read this. We're going to read through the story again. I'm just going to extract a few other points that God has shown me, that God gave me eyes to see in his word. Are you ready for this? Second Kings chapter 6, starting at 21. It says, when the king of Israel saw them and he said to Elijah, let's, let's, you know, let me back up just a little bit. You remember the story last, last week where the story was that the servant of the Lord, when he woke up from the when he woke up from sleep and he got up that day and he opened the door there was armies surrounding his house there was armies attacking him and when he went to sleep that night when he got up in the morning what he, he he went to sleep one way he got up another way how many of you've ever had that in your life you're going to go to bed, everything is good, and then the next day you wake up and everything is disarray. It's like, oh, my God, where did this happen? That's how sometimes the enemy comes against us in the night. And I love how the word of God says that weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. And when he woke up and he opened his door and he saw that there was an army, a chariots of army in front of his door, the first thing he says, oh, my God, what are we going to do? And then the prophet told him, and he, when he said what we're going to do, and, and that's found in, in verse 15, he says, And when the servant of the man of God arose early, and he went out, and there was an army surrounding the city of horses and chariots, and his servant said to him, At last, my master, what shall we do? Verse 16, he said, So he answered, Do not fear. Come on, someone say, Do not fear. For those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elijah prayed and he said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. So the Lord opened his eyes and the young man he saw. And behold, the mountains were full of horses, of chariots, of fire all around Elisha. So when the Syrians came down, the Syrians are the enemies, church. Come on, some of you have some Syrians in your life that seem to be overwhelming and attacking us. Come on. Outwardly and inwardly, come on, physically and mentally, emotionally. There's some Syrians that show up in our lives. And Syrians came down to him and Elisha prayed to the Lord. You see what's so profound here, I love it, verse 17, it says, and Elisha prayed. We cannot discount the power of prayer. When he was surrounded by the enemy, when he was surrounded by circumstances that he did not see, when he was surrounded of things that were out of his control. You see, some of you are going through things in your life right now that is out of your control and you're wanting, you're wanting help and you're desperate and you're needing hope. But it says, and when he prayed. Oh, when we pray, you know what? We turn away from looking what we're going through and we turn to the one that can do something about it. I said, when we pray, we turn away from what we see in the natural and we turn to the one in the supernatural and say, God, I don't know how we're going to do this. I don't know how we're going to get through this. So I'm looking to you. Come on, someone say, I'm looking to you. I'm looking to you. Elisha prayed. And the Lord opened his eyes that he might see. And his eyes were open and the young man saw. Oh, come on. And we will pray, God, open my eyes to see what you see. Open my eyes to help me to see what you see, what I'm going through. He'll give us a fresh perspective, amen, that those that are against us are not more than those that is with us. Because you and I with God is the majority. Whatever you're facing, whatever insurmountable trial, whatever attack, whatever it is you're going to listen, and we all have them differently here today. And you know what God is saying? It's the same he said then and it's the same for us today because God's word is eternal. And he says those that are facing against you are not more than those that are with you. Oh, we have the victory, church. But look what, what, look what he goes on to do. In verse 18, he says, so when the Syrians came down to him, Elisha prayed to the Lord. And he said, strike this people, meaning the enemies, I pray with blindness. So, so he prayed for the servant to get sight. And then he prayed for the enemy to get blindness. Isn't that something? 
He said, give him sight so he can see that those that are with us are not more than a force, that those that are against us are not more than a force. Now give the enemy blindness so that when they come towards us, they can't even see where we are. Wouldn't it be amazing that your enemies would get blinded to the fact that God is doing something in your life and they can't even get to you? They can't even get to you. Come on, some of us need that in our life right now, that your enemy can't get to you. Don't let your enemy get to you. You know how that happens? Through prayer. I'm not going to let that get to me. Come on, look at the person and say, I'm not going to let that get to me. Who? Come on, you can't let it get to you. Why? Because when we look to God, we know that God's going to handle it. When we don't look to God and we, make, and we take matters in our own hands, then it gets to us. That's for somebody today. God's like, surrender it. Release it. It said he struck the pe- he, he struck the people with blindness, and he struck them with blindness according to the word of Elisha, verse nineteen. Now Elisha said to them, "This is not the way, nor the city. <laughs> Follow me, and I will bring you to the man in whom you seek." In other words, the enemy came to them, and because they got struck with blindness, he said, you're at the wrong, come on, you came to the wrong address. This is not where you want to come. This is not who you're coming against. Let me take you to where you're going. Isn't that supernatural, and isn't that amazing that God would do something like that, that your very enemies, when he comes against you, you know the Bible says the enemy will come against you one way, and God will cause them to flee seven different ways. Ooh, that's good. Come on, somebody got excited about that. Listen, I'm, ex- I'm excited at the fact that the enemy can come against me. And because I'm looking to God, God will cause my enemies to go another way. And some of us think that we've gotten the victory on, on our own. And no, it was God pushing them off. It was God getting them out of your way. It was God distracting them. It was God taking them off your path. I know in my life the enemies have came against me. It wasn't me. It was God saying, no, this is my servant. No, this is my son. No, you can't have him. You can't have his marriage. You can't have his family. You can't have his future. I redeemed them. I called them. He's mine. I said, oh, come on. If you really will see how God views you, he's constantly fighting for you. Amen. So thankful for that. I'm so thankful for that. Oh, you got to have eyes to see to see this. And so, verse 20, and so when they had come to Samaria, Elijah said, Lord, open the eyes of these men that they may see. Are you following with me? And the Lord opened their eyes and they saw that they were inside Samaria. Listen, the enemy wind up being blind and then wound up in the camp of the people that they went against. The enemy came against them, God blinded them, and they wind up being in the very camp of the people that they were trying to come against. And when their eyes were open, when their eyes, when they had eyes to see, they wind up being right in the middle of their own trap. Wow. Come on, God can trap your enemies. Those that are coming against you, God can trap your enemies. And I love that about God. And verse 21, it says, when the king of Israel saw them, and he said to Elisha, listen to this, my father, verse 21, my father, should I kill them? Should I kill them? In other words, he was like, they were coming against us. Now we got them. We got them trapped. Should I take them out? Should I kill them? Come on, can I do them in? And he was like, no, 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 don't do it. Don't kill them. And for some of us, not all of us, maybe most of us, got some enemies that you wish you can do something to. <laughs> because they were trying to do something to you. Say something against you. Says something bad or, or intended something harm for you. I've had people in my life that, that have said or, or, or planned things against me. And you know what? When I gave the battle to God, you know what wind up happening? The Bible says that no weapon formed against you will prosper. So when the enemy rises up against you and you turn to God, come on, God would turn your enemies to even fall into the, the same trap. And look what he said. He said, shall I kill them? And he said, would you kill those whom you have taken captive by the sword and by the bows? Look what he goes on to say. This is so profound to me. Set food and water before them that they may eat and go their way to their master. He said, no, I don't want you to kill the enemies. I want you to be kind to them. I don't want you to blast your enemies. I want you to bless your enemies. I don't want you to hurt your enemies. I want you to help your enemies. God, did you just say help my enemies? Yeah, I want you to help. Didn't Jesus says love your enemies? 
Come on, some of us have some enemies in the past and enemies that are against us and enemies and lies that come against us. You know what God says? I don't want you, I don't want you to harm your enemies. I want you to bless your enemies. Well, God, don't, God, don't you remember how bad they're talking about me? Come on, some of us have family members like that right now. They've been talking bad about you. Come on, they've been treating you bad. They, bad, bad <laughs> oh, my Lord. Intentions that are bad. And God is like, I want you to bless them. You know why he wants us to bless them? Because if God can, if you can bless your enemies with God's vision, that means he can trust you with his provision. If you can bless your enemies with the vision that God gives you, that means that what he really has for you, he can trust you. But if God blesses you with something and you use what he gives you, if he gives you the upper hand to do those people harm, guess what? That he can't trust you because it's never God's intended purpose to harm anyone, but it's to open their eyes to see that God is a God of love and God is a God of grace and God is a God of mercy. So when you see your enemies, if God would give you eyes to see and say, I see you, but you know what? God's going to call me to love you. I see you. I know, I know you have evil intentions against me, but I'm just going to love you because love is greater than hate. Come on. Unity is greater than division. That's why the enemy wants to divide his church, God's church. But God says, no, where there's unity, there's my blessedness. Where there's love, it overcomes hate, right? Where Come on, we have no room for division. We have no room for racism. We have no room for, for hurt. We have no room to harm anybody else. It doesn't matter who they are. We're here to love everybody. Amen. Come on, someone say, give me eyes to see. God's prophetic vision for our lives. You know what God does when he gives you a prophetic vision for your life? When you pray, God, give me eyes to see. When God gives his people prophetic vision, we see before others do. When God gives you a vision, you see before others see. When the enemy comes against you, you see before others see. God gives us spiritual insight. That's why I'm so super excited about the prayer ministry that we're establishing. Because there's people in this church that have spiritual eyesight and spiritual insight to see how the enemy works. Because they're people of prayer. If you want to know, know what God sees, then you have to be people of prayer. We have to be people of prayer. So not only does God gives us prophetic vision and we see before others do, we also see beyond what others do. Not only what before what others do, but beyond what others do. Isn't that amazing that you, we can see beyond what the natural sees? Oh, I see it, God. I see what you have for me. I see what you're planning for me. I see the future, and it looks a whole lot better than it does right now. Come on, God, I can see beyond. Come on, doesn't he say in Ephesians 3.20? Come on, unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond what you can imagine or think according to the power that works within you. That's found in Ephesians 3.20. So not only do we see before others do, and we see beyond others do, but you know what I love? We see bigger than others do. Or we see it bigger. God, I see the bigger picture. I'm not going to give into smallness of people. I'm not going to give into people's ways. I see the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is that you want me to bless. You want to bless me, God. You want to bless me to be a blessing. Come on, he wants to bless you to be a blessing. And this is what he did in this story. Because the, because the young man wanted to take his enemies out. He said, no, you're not going to take them out. I'm going to show you what it's like that when you have the enemy in your presence, you're going to feed them. You're going to be kind to them. You're going to love them. You're going to help them. So that is the greatest revenge that we can ever have, church. That when our enemies show up, we can bless them. When that enemy showed up, we can show love to them. Come on, if you have any enemies in your life, the best revenge that you and I can have is to bless them, is to pray for them, is to forgive them. Oh, come on, when you know you're blessed when you can pray for your enemies. Oh, a few people said hey, amen. The rest of you are like, that's hard to do. It is hard to do. When you can pray for your enemies... And not only did he pray for his enemies, look, he says, set food and water before them that they may eat and drink and go their own way. Isn't that what David did in the Psalm, in 23rd Psalm, verse 5? He says, you set a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Oh, when you can serve your enemies, not serve them harm, but serve them good, guess what? God's going to turn it around for your favor. 
So before, so when we can see before and we can see beyond and we can see bigger, it's so that we can be a blessing to others. When God shows you his prophetic vision, it's not about you. Come on, someone says it's not about me. See, I think sometimes that's where we get it mixed up, church, that we think church is about us. That we think church is about me. What can I get, God? God, I hope that pastor has a good message today. I hope the worship team is on point today. I hope the AC is not that hot or not that cold. I hope, I hope when it becomes about me, we don't wind up living out and walking out the full purpose that God has for us as the church. Because we're not called to be consumers. We're called to be contributors. We're called to contribute to the kingdom of God that it would advance Amen. And that's why this young man was a little perplexed because he was ready to take out his enemies. And God was like, no, no, you're not taking out his enemy. The enemy came in our camp so we can show kindness to them so that the greatest enemy can see that what is against us can't prevail. I mean, some of us here today, we have some enemies in our lives. Come on, the enemies of unforgiveness and bitterness and resentment. The enemies of addiction and the enemies of hatred and and I'm telling you here that the enemy, the enemy is going to be slayed because when God gives his vision, he gives us provision. He gives us the victory. Oh, we need to pray. God, give us eyes to see. So worship team make their way to the platform. And I love how it's said here. He said, should I take them out? He said, no, don't, don't, don't take them out, but bless them. Bless them. Because when God can trust you with his vision, then it will cause you to bless your enemies. Wow. And do you know that that is the greatest characteristic that the world needs to see today in a believer? That we can bless people that don't believe like us. That we can bless people that don't look like us. That we can bless people that don't live like us. Come on. We can bless people that are not like us. Not look at, down at people, but lift people up. And say, you may not believe like me. You may not look like me. You may not come from where I come from, but I'm still going to love you. Come on. I know you're broken right now, but God can restore you. I know you're hurting, but God can heal you. I know you're going through addiction right now, but God can free you. I know you're going through what seems hopeless, but God can help you. Come on. I know what you're going through right now. It doesn't seem like it makes sense, but when God gives you eyes to see, it all makes sense. I know what you're facing right now is a fiery trial, but you need to know, sister, brother, you're not alone because we're all in this same battle. You think, you're, you think you're struggling by yourself, but you're not by yourself because those that are with us are greater than those that are against us. That's why we need to gather together, church. That's why we need to get into God's house. Why? Because we get to see that I'm not the only one going through it. I'm not the only one going a little crazy. Come on. I'm not the only one. Come on. I'm not, I'm not the only one going through this trial. No, you're not. It, we, can, we can sit down and have a conversation about trials. We all been through them. But what's important is this. We don't, we don't, we don't focus on the trial. We focus on the triumph. I don't focus on what I'm going through. I focus on where I'm going to. I don't focus on where I've been. I'm focusing on where I'm going. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Some of us get stuck on the past. And God's like, no, no, the past is the past for that reason. And the very reason that we may be going through a storm is because that storm is created to form you into the likeness of Christ. For some of us, we're going through the most strongest storm in our lives right now that nobody knows about. But God is forming you. And God is using that storm. And what has happened to you like you think is really happening for you. Because it's in the storm that we cry out for help. It's in the storm that we get on our knees. It's in the storm that we ask God for help. You see, when everything is good, come on, when everything is good, we really turn to God for help. It's oh, A lot of times it's when things are not going good. But wouldn't it be amazing that we would turn to God when things are good and when things are not going good? And we would turn to God in the valley or we would turn to God on the mountain. Come on, we would turn to God when we got a light in the bank or we would turn to God when we only got two pennies in our pocket. Come on, that we would turn to God no matter what. I'm going to I'm gonna turn to God no matter what. I just encourage you, those of you that are watching online, <laughs> make it a priority to go to, to gather with God's people. Make it a priority. In the day that we need, the, that we live in, we have to make it a priority. And lastly, I haven't heard the worship team playing, so I'm still going to keep going. Come on. <laughs> it sounds more spiritual to land a plane. I love God's word because it gives us revelation to see with his eyes. Oh, I love his word. He says, set food and water before them that they may eat and drink. 
and go to their master. Verse 23, he says, then he didn't just do water and bread. Come on, some of us would give him crackers and water. <laughs> I'm just going to give him some crackers and water and I hope that they make it. No, 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 that's not what we do to the enemies. We're called to bless them. Come on, somebody say bless them. He said, then he prepared a great feast. Imagine preparing a great feast for your enemies. And after they ate and drank, he sent them their way, and they went to their master. I love this last verse, and we're going to pray. So the band of Syrian raiders came no more to the land of Israel. Woo! He said the band of Syrian raiders. Raiders, Come on, the, ba the, the band of enemies. You don't know what it show. It wasn't just one enemy. It was a band of enemies. Some of us, what we're going through is just not one thing. It's multiple things. Come on, it's just not one enemy. There are many enemies that come against us. And you know what God says? When you bless your enemies and you don't intend them harm, oh, I know they intended you harm, and I know they spoke against you, and I know they made you look bad, and I know they, they, they dragged your name to the dirt. Come on, for many of us can resonate with that right now. He said, but when you bless them, and when you pray for them, and when you feed them, and when you wish them well, I'm going to turn it around for your favor. And you will no longer see those enemies in your life again. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. I got some enemies in my life I don't want to see again. And God said, until you bless them, you're going to keep seeing them. Mm. I don't know who needs to hear. Until you bless your enemies, you're going to keep seeing them. Until you change what you speak against them, you're going to keep seeing them. But if you can bless them, if you can wish them well, God says, I'm going to get them out of, the, I'm going to get them out of your way. That's revelation right there. I wonder why they kept showing up because we kept speaking against them. And God says, what you speak against will keep showing up. But when you bless them, they're going to realize that they were in the wrong all along. And could it be that God can use someone that intended you evil to turn around and to see that you were in the right and they want to turn to the God that gave you a heart for them and not against them? Wouldn't it be amazing that some of our own enemies would turn to the Lord that we're serving now? What a testimony that will be. Stand with me. Eyes to see. He says, so the band of Syrian raiders came no more to that land. You know what God is saying? The enemy that you see today, you're no longer going to see again. Come on, the enemy you're facing today, you're no longer going to face again. The enemy that's come against your family, your marriage, your future, your finances, your health, the situation you're facing. He said, as long as you bless me, as long as you look to me, as long as you depend on me, you will no longer see them again. Will some of them that look like them pop up again? Absolutely, they will. But because we know that God has given eyes to see, you know what we say? Oh, I see you. <laughs> you look familiar. <laughs> You've been, I see you. I see what you're trying to come against. You look familiar. I see before. I see beyond. And I see bigger than what God has for my life. So now we see our enemies differently. Differently. With every head bow and every eye closed. Oh, some of you have been fighting enemies in your life. Some of you have been fighting enemies, silent Syrian enemies. Silent Syrian, Syrian enemies. These are enemies that you go to bed and everybody else is asleep, but they keep you up at night. Silent Syrian enemies. These are enemies that have been speaking to your, to your voice in your head saying, you don't got what it takes. I know God gave you, God said he's going to do great things in you, but you don't have what it takes. Look where you came from. Look what you're struggling with. Look what you're going through. Look what you're battling with. Look what's happening in your life right now. But today that's going to change. Because our circumstances may change, but God doesn't change. And every head bound, every eye closed, if you are here today and you have been battling enemies in your life, mental, emotional, spiritual, physical, or relational, financial, whatever it is, God is saying that those that are for you are greater than those that are against you. And I just want to challenge you right now. Maybe you have relational enemies. Maybe you have enemies against you. You know one of the greatest enemies is the enemy in me. Come on, I beat myself up. I pull myself down. I don't sometimes believe enough in myself, but God is saying, I've called you and I've redeemed you. Called you. If that's you today, with every head bowed and every heart closed, without hesitation, slip out of your seat, come to the altar. Come on, bring, bring what you're going through to the altar. 
bring what you're going through to the, or whatever enemy you're facing. Come on, whatever it is, you might be bound today. You might be struggling with unforgiveness. You might be struggling. Whatever enemy you're facing, I know my enemies. And the Lord says, Reuben, every time you bring it to me, I'm going to give you the fortitude to bless that which try to curse you. I'm going to turn it around for your favor and your good. Come on, slip out of your seat from the back to the front, from the left to the right. Come on, there's an altar call because God wants to alter how you see. God wants to change how you see. And when he changes how you see, he changes your elevation. Come on, when, you, uh, when you're elevated to another place of seeing, you see differently. Some of you need to stop looking at the enemy that you've been looking at the past. And God said, no, no, let me give you eyes to see. Because when I elevate you, you're going to see differently. Come on, you're going to see differently. You're going to see differently. Some of you are struggling with addictions. God says, I'm the God that can break, you, break it free. I'm the God that can set the captives free. And that enemy that you've dealt with for so many years, you no longer have to deal with it again. I'm the one. Come on right now. You say, Pastor Reuben, I'm not right with God. I know where I'm not, where I should be with God. God's like, that's why I want to give you eyes to see. Because when you become born again, you see spiritually. And the way you become born again is you just surrender your life to Christ. If that's you today, maybe you're watching online. You need to be born again so that God can give you eyes to see. All you have to do is surrender today. Come on, there's a surrender happening right now. There's a shift happening right now. And the enemy is being disarmed. Because God has given us eyes to see. Come on, let's worship it. We're going to pray. Come on, you're there in your seat and you say, Pastor Reuben, I'm struggling. Come on, release what you're going through and give it to God. Slip out of your seat and come and come and come. Come on, let's worship him and we're going to pray. We surrender, God. Give us eyes to see. Come on, let that be your prayer right now. God, give me eyes to see. Give me eyes to see. Give me eyes to see. Oh, come on, someone is finding victory right now. Come on, miracles are happening right now. Come on, we don't need spectators, we need participators. Come on, we need people praying. Come on, there's people right now, their lives are hanging in the balance. There's people right now, they've came, that are hopeless and, and don't know what to do. Just like Elisha, when he opened his eyes, he said, God, what should I do? And he opened his eyes and showed him that I'm with you, that I'm for you, that you have the victory. Hallelujah, right where you are, come on. Raise your hand if you feel comfortable enough, just surrender. This is a place of surrender right now. Freedom 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 right now. Come on, church. Come on, this is it, church. This is it, church. Right now. Right now. Right now. Open the eyes. Right now. Right now. Lord, we need you, God. Lord, we need you, God. Lord, we need you. Lord, we need you. Oh, open the eyes of my Lord. Open the eyes of my Lord. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes. Oh, open the eyes of my
So pray for those that are here at the altar, and then we're going to dismiss. If I could do that real quick, if we could do that, there's something God is doing very special right now, and I need you. If you will respond, there's people that are needing breakthroughs in their life right now, right where you are, right where you are. We can have our leaders to come forward, and if you're here, we just want to say, listen, thank you so much for visiting with us at Refuge Church. We love you, and we wish God's best for you. We believe that as he gives us eyes to see and ears to hear, that we're going to walk in the victory that he has for us. Amen. Refuge Church, be blessed. Have an amazing week. God is doing, still doing some things here. Our leaders are going to remain here. If you need prayer, please come to the altar. Don't leave without surrendering what God has put on your heart to give to him. But if not, we love you. Have an amazing week. Victory filled week. Be blessed. Amen. Be blessed, Refuge.